Hey, good evening, beautiful people. Good evening. Let me invite a couple of people on here. <clears throat> I actually really do not want to be long on here. I want to share something that I shared with um, share with them as we were in uh, Texas, and uh, it, we had a really good time. And I want to share with the share with you something that I shared. Uh, with the ladies while we were in Texas. Um, uh, I think it's going to bless you and actually might make you laugh <laughs> a little bit. How are you all? I'm going to go ahead and jump on for the sake of my voice and time. But I think this is so appropriate, especially for this time of night when we normally get into conversations. Amen. Uh, but you'll see that I entitled it, <clears throat> he's speaking my language. He's speaking my language. And um, I wanted to get a couple of people on here real quick. We want to talk about he's speaking my language. He's speaking uh, my language. And uh, I was talking to uh, some of the young ladies about um, Adam and Eve. And we were just saying, hey, daughter, how you doing? Um, I was talking to a couple of people about Adam and Eve. And I was talking about, hey, Pastor Mike, Pastor Yvonne, how are you? You guys invite people on. I'm going to be quick, but this is going to be good. Hey, son, good to see you. Uh, I'm glad you're on here. But we were talking about Adam and Eve on the way down. And um, I was sharing with uh, um, daughter Sharla and sister Renita. We were talking about how I said, when I get to heaven, I'm about to look at Eve and be like, girl, what was you thinking? You know, and then I start smiling. I began to explain to them one thing that my spiritual dad, uh, apostle, um, uh, Dr. Oscar says all the time, he says, you guys talking about you're going to be mad at Eve. He said, but you can't be mad at Eve when Eve was actually listening to someone who spoke her language. Listen, Eve is in the garden. And the only person that she's ever really heard speak is her husband. You know, she's heard God. Uh, she's heard them speak the same language um, all the time. That's all she knew. But then all of a sudden, here comes this creature that may have not been around them all the time. But this creature is now speaking the very same heavenly language, the very same divine language, the same dialect as her. And so, of course, she's interested because here's... I mean, she's not going to be afraid to speak to somebody that's speaking the same language as she. And so she goes and, and, and of course, the enemy starts speaking to her. So here we want to go and I want to share with you what I told them. I said many times, many women fall into traps because you taught them how to speak the language. <laughs> Come on, boy. Would y'all to follow me real quick? Amen. The scripture says this. Hey, Daryl, how are you doing? I, I, I love you. I miss you. Listen, it says in uh, Genesis chapter three, it says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, so we know if we're talking about a serpent, we're talking about a snake. And if a snake is talking, you know, there's something very interested about that, right? So we know we're talking about a spirit, something that had possessed its host or the snake. And so the, this, the Satan, Satan himself had possessed this snake. And he said unto her, yea, hath God said, so now he's causing her to question, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw... That the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband. And he did eat and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And so 
so we already know that God came and they began to call them and ask where they were and uh, Adam said, you know, we heard your voice and we hid because we were afraid because we were naked. And the Lord said, wait a minute, who told you that you were naked because you shouldn't have had this type of uh, information? Who told you that you were naked? Did you do the very thing that I told you not to do? And so, of course, the man says, hey, the woman told me I ate it. And the woman said, well, there was a snake that tricked me, that beguiled me, that deceived me. And I did eat. Now, I want to talk to this to women and men in light of what happened happened to Eve, the reason they can take you down is because you taught them the language. Listen, the enemy came here and the Bible says that the serpent was more subtle and he came to the woman. This is those probing questions. And he said, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree. And I began to share with the women who were in the vehicle with me. I said, you begin to teach them their language with their first probing question. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Oh, tell me about the Christianity. Oh, tell me what it is that you believe. I want to hear all about you. And so Eve began to release information and she began to say that we can eat of the, the fruit of the trees of this garden. And so I began to tell them what happens is that guy who comes and you kind of feel maybe something a little off, but he starts speaking real good. And he says, tell me about you. I want to know all about you. What, what makes you tick? You know, tell me what has hurt you before, uh, because I never want to be that man. And so to the emotions of a woman that kind of tickles your ear. And so unbeknownst to you, this very subtle person who has come into your life, who is operating deception, is learning the language of you. I just said something right there. He's coming and he's learning the language of you. And so in the probing question, what he begins to say is, I want to know your hurts. Listen, what he really want to say is, I want to know how I can get to you. He, he's, he's saying, I want to know your pains. What he really is saying behind that is, I'm going to be a pain to you. He said, I want to know your deepest secrets. I want you to understand. because And what he's telling you from your mouth is, his mouth is, I don't want to ever do that to you. But the serpent that has taken possession of him, come on, the spirit that came to destroy you is very subtle. And he's asking you things for a woman because you're so emotional. And a lot of women want to be married. and Everybody wants to be loved, whether you're male or female. It doesn't matter. But after the probing question, you begin to release. <laughs> and as you begin to release and you tell them, you know what, I, I, you know, I started dating when I was young and, you know, I didn't know anything. My first boyfriend taught me everything. Come on, I'm trying to help y'all. My first boyfriend, he taught me how to kiss. I never really had no kiss. Absolutely, that's what it is. I never really knew what it is to kiss. He's the first one that ever held my heart. Nobody has ever held my heart like that. Oh, wow, really? Well, what about him was so special? Here's the question. I mean, it was the way he held me. It was the way he talked to me. It was the way he presented my... Well, oh, what happened to that relationship? Well, you know, I, I was so insecure listen. I was so insecure that, you know, I didn't believe that I could be loved. I was so insecure that I didn't think that he really wanted me. I was so insecure. I'm trying to help y'all. Or you say, you know what? I'm so strong that he couldn't handle a woman like me. Come on. I'm so strong. He he couldn't deal with me. Listen, I, I make all this money. And so what the enemy is, listen, somebody who wants to tear your strong self down will hear all the pump and circumstances that said, I am so strong. A man can't handle a woman like me. You know, they can't handle my success. I have a good job. I have my own house. I'm at what you're doing is teaching him the language. I need y'all to share this. Somebody <laughs> needs this. And so you begin to teach them the language of you. You begin to teach them your love, your love language. You begin to teach them your fears. You begin to show him your insecurities. You begin to tell them the thing that really makes your heart tick and and so why he's really silent, why you are sharing things and you say, you know, but I'm a Christian and I don't believe in sex before marriage. <laughs> I'm a believer and I don't believe in sex before marriage. What you don't understand in the realm of the spirit to the deceitful, to the cunning, to the subtle is that's a ding, 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 ding. I got a challenge. 
Pastor Stephen, thank you. Ding, 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 ding. I got a challenge. Because this one just shared with me her love language. This one just shared with me how to speak to her. And so he learns how to speak your language. And so he loves that you love salutations. And so when he calls you, good morning, sweetheart. How are you? I just want to call you early so I can be the first voice you hear. And you done already melted out your shoes. Come on. Come on. He wants to. He calls you at lunchtime and he says hey I'm going to bring you lunch I don't want you to spend your money listen that's for those of you who make money I need to show you that I'm a man I don't need your money I make my own I'm going to bring you lunch whatever it is you want I'm going to bring it to you today I don't care if that joke I had to take out a loan you wouldn't know it I'm trying to help you tell, show you how you teach them how to speak your language it's better to shut your mouth up and allow God to show you what you're really working with. So listen to this. And so now you make your own money and he is renting cars. That's really not he is. So he's pulling up in the bins and this really not he is. Or he's driving his friend's car or, and maybe it is his car, but he's trying to speak your language to show you, I don't need your money. When on the inside, the whole job is to bring you down. And so if you continue to look in the scriptures, it says that she said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees and go, Oh, we can get married. We just can't have sex. Come on. Come on. We can, we can date. But as soon as you try to touch me, I'm out of here. And so what you're doing is teaching him the language of you. And says, she says, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Now check this. God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it lest she die. Now we all know that God just told them they can't eat of it. Her fear added the other part. <laughs> Her fear added the other part. And so what we say is, oh yeah, we can date, but um, I can't have you in my house at a certain time, which is wise. Or I can't be at your house at a certain time, which is wise. Or you get so panicky that even on your date, you're stiff like this. And, and so what you're doing is giving him clues how to handle you. I mean, how to handle you, right? And so, and so he said, come on now. You're not going to surely die. And so when you're telling them that I can't sleep around, I got to present my body a living sacrifice. And then you, because you're teaching your language, said, I've been celibate for one year, two years, three years, five years. You're teaching him the language of you. And so now he knows, and I'm sorry, I love the women of God. And there are many strong women of God who are single, who are holding out. You love God with all your heart, soul, and being. You want to love God with everything that is in you, but because you have released the language of you, because you have taught him and you have told him secrets that he never should have known. He now knows how to talk to weasel himself in. So now you better say, oh man, you, yeah, I know you must get lonely sometimes. And so your kitchen, your, your Christian guard is, no, I ain't lonely. I love God. You don't love God. What's up with you? And so he backs up for a little bit, but I'm still taking you to dinner because I know your language. I'm still getting you that. I know you like flowers and the other one doesn't like flowers. They like cards and the other one doesn't like cards. They like little notes. Come on. We teach them the language because we have released the secrets and they are are skillful masters. This is not every man. Listen, there are great men out there, but I'm trying to answer the questions of those who continue to find themselves in the same cycle of, of, of meeting men who have used their secrets against them. My husband is a good man. There are good men on here. There are good men in the body of Christ. There are good men in the world, but there are also snakes. <laughs> There are women that are snakes too. And so they were asking me these questions and I'm like, I'm going to help my daughters not go through these same cycles. The reason that they know how to handle you is because you taught them the language of you. <laughs> Listen. And so as she added that fear part and said that we can't touch it, then he like, huh? Now you say, you know what? I... Uh, so you get to know them a little bit more and you've been around them for a month or two and you start to let your guards down a little bit. And so one night you happen to mention that, you know what? I love God, but oh my God, this thing is hard. Boy, you so cute. Sometimes I got to And you just let them in. <laughs> uh-huh. 
Young men who are trying to keep themselves in the body of Christ and you want to live holy too. And you're dating this young woman who just was fresh off the streets and now she's in the church and she hasn't yet learned how to possess her vessel. And she sees that you're living holy. However, there is something that still she hasn't been delivered from. And so you allow her into your secret places and you begin to tell her how you desire a good wife, a, a woman who can talk to you, a church lady, a lady that knows how to be classy and sexy, a woman that knows the word of God, but also knows how to do her things at home. And now the woman becomes everything that you told her because you taught her the language of you. And so now he wants a wife and so he likes women with hats. So she starts wearing hats and he likes football. So she starts watching football and he likes to do outdoor camping. She ain't never picked up, not even a dog, but now she wants to go fishing and all because you've taught her the language of you. And so then you get this false thing and you marry this false thing and then who they really are begins to show. Walk with me. You taught them the language of you. And so he told her, you ain't going to really die. So because you're teaching them the language, they get to the point that says, listen, you ain't going to go to hell just because you live your life. You're not going to go to hell. God knows your heart. He knows that you want to feel love. He knows that you want. Listen, he made us man for woman and woman for man. And, you know, I, 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 I don't mean any harm. You're so beautiful on all these points. But I got to know that when I marry you, that I'm able to satisfy you. Are you able to satisfy me? Y'all better hear me today. Y'all know I'm talking good. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. And my daughters are in there just like, oh, my God. And I said. It's powerful because we don't realize that we're literally getting the wealth. We're giving the weapons and the tools to take us out. Come on, somebody share this for me. Somebody on your line needs this. It said in verse five, for God does not know that for God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Let me tell you how that goes in the language of you. What they say is, I know you're so pent up. I, I don't know if y'all heard that before. I know you're so stressed. Let me just, let me just massage your back. Come on. I ain't even going to do nothing. I just just want to massage your back. We ain't even got to, you listen, you can leave your clothes on. We, we ain't got to do nothing. Just lay across the couch. Come on, just lay across my lap. I just want to, oh, your shoulders are so tense. Just let me, just let me rub your shoulders. And you like, that's all. You better just rub my shoulders because we ain't going no further. But then all of a sudden that thing began to feel a little good. And so he said, no, now I just want to go. Listen, I want to go down to your shoulder blade. Let me get, cause you kind of feel tight there. And you're like, don't go no further than my shoulder blade. Ooh, that feels good. And he already know because what he is, is waking love before his time. What he is, is he has learned your love language. So he knows how to touch you. What it is, is he has learned what makes you tick because you told your secrets. Listen, guys, you are so much greater than this. We think we're going to be at, mad at Eve. Eve, why did you eat that apple? Look what you did to us. But I'm going to ask yourself, why are you telling your secrets? Look what you keep doing to you. I'm going to let that sit there. Why are you telling your secrets? Look what you did to you. And so here, he said, you know, your eyes are going to be open. Listen, you're going to feel relief from your body. You're going to feel all oh, the stress going to go. And so, and here's the little kiss here on the neck. And you, uh-uh, come on, don't do that. Girl, we ain't going no further than this. And y'all know how the process goes. It's kind of like getting in a swimming pool. You stick your toes in there first, and it's a little cold, and you back up. Next thing you know, you put your foot in there, and you say, I ain't going too far. This shivers, and then you walk a little further Till it get to your waist and you and then all of a sudden you go a little higher till it gets to your chest and, and then immediately you'll finally just say I'm tired of this it's so cold I'm just going to go underwater and get it over anybody ever done that I've done that in the swimming pool before and I've done it in life in the swimming pool before you know I'm like oh just get it over it's so cold if you go ahead and get under the water you'll get warm real quick and so you said I'm tired of being kissed on the lips I'm tired of just going on a date 
I'm just gonna tongue kiss this time, but we ain't gonna touch. Okay, I'm gonna let him get to first base, but he ain't gonna go no further than that. And then you find yourself shaving your legs. Lord, help me today. You find yourself making sure your Victoria's Secrets match. You find yourself making sure that all things are together. Come on, I'm just trying to help you. But in your mind, you say, I ain't messing up. We ain't gonna do nothing, but baby, you are chest high in the water. <laughs> And all it'll take, yes, don't pet the python. And all it is going to take is that one last secret that you had released in those midnight conversations where you were saying, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Oh, let's hang up together. Oh, we fell asleep talking to each other. I'm trying to help somebody today. We fell asleep talking to each other. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And he like got her. She like got him because I got the secrets. And so now, now they make you question. I mean, for real, is it just uh, uh, God didn't make humans to just be in a monogamous relationship? I mean, no animal really lives in monogamous relationships. Animals have two and three mates, even though penguins and other things mate for life. But animals have two and three mates, so maybe we're going about this wrong. Maybe it's okay to test drive the car before I buy it or milk the cow before I buy it. Maybe it's okay. It's okay if we live together. We're just going to be roommates. We're not going to sleep together. I'm trying to help somebody. I love y'all. It says, so when the woman saw that, listen, the tree was good for food. Come on, because that man, many times in the Bible, the tree represents man. I'm not saying this here, but tree represents man. And it says that when she saw that the tree was good for food. And so women, you begin to see that this man don't mind bringing you dinner, lunch. He don't mind going grocery shopping. Listen, he done took Yes, they hit you with that false doctrine. Listen, he done took your children to the park and told you go rest. Oh my God. Listen, he done, he done bought your kids ice cream and didn't get you none. So the kids is laughing because he know the secret. He know you love your children and you're not going to allow anything to hurt them because what you said as the guarded mom and I love my kids. And if anything come at mine, if they can't accept the whole package, you tell them your language. So now get close to the kids. <sighs> mm hmm. Yeah. I've always, I've handled this by myself. Their daddy don't do nothing. You teach them a language. Their, their daddy don't doing nothing for them. I, I go to work. I do this. I go this. I go this and I get that. He always say he going to come get them for the weekend and they never do. And so what does he say? The next time, let's me, you and your kids go to the park. Let me push them on the swing. <laughs> Let me. I brought your little girl this doll. I'm going to throw this football with your son. Oh, he loves baseball. Here's a bat and a ball. Because you done taught them your language. You taught them the language of you. Even as Satan, even as he took, he took over the host of this serpent and he began to speak a language that Eve was familiar with, a divine language. The enemy is now using people as he take possession of them or he coming after you to target you and he's, he's probing like he did Eve. What did God say? And so these people are probing and they're getting your secrets because you're telling them in the midnight you hang up you hang up. No, you hang up conversations. And so now the kids, we might, we like Mr. Johnny, your kids. We, 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 we like Miss Tiffany because you told them how to handle you. And so she saw that this thing was good for food. He's a good provider. Look how he take care of me and the kids and that it was pleasant to the eye. He's handsome. He smells good. And it was a treat to be desired to make one wise because he's, 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 he's stepping you up on game. <laughs> he's even been helpful. Uh-uh, no. Tell that company that you won't do it this way. Tell them to bring it down to this amount and you'll be willing to pay it or you'll do this. And so he gives you the game, listen. And so you do the game, listen. And then it works the way you want it. And you're like, oh my God, he care about me. He helped me. He made me wise. He brought me up. I'm telling you, there was one in my life. This was way back when, y'all. I'm, I'm like, Sophia, I'm set free and delivered so I can give my testimony. 
Been there, done that. But that joker, he, I mean, literally, he hyped me up on game. He taught me the game. He taught me stuff. Look for this, look for that. And I'm like, oh, he got my back. Yeah, with a knife. Listen. And it says, and, 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 and it made you wise. And so she took the fruit. And so we asked ourselves, why do I fall for the same man? Why do I fall for the same woman? Why do they all seem to treat me the same way? Because you teach them the language of you. I said something. You teach them the language of you. And so not only do you eat, but you give it to somebody else. <laughs> My God. And so the Bible says in verse 7, the eyes of both of them were open. And so all of a sudden, one thing that I know about sin, been there, done that, especially sexual sin, is it feel good while you in it, but my God, yes, sir, Pastor Steve, it feels good while you're in it, but afterwards, the shame and guilt hit. You don't hear the serpent talking no more after he caused them to fall. And so as I told my daughters in that vehicle, I said, after they learn your language, after they use the language against you. Absolutely. After they cause you to fall, then now your phone calls are not being answered anymore. Now your text messages are not being answered anymore. Now, while you heard from them two to three times a day, you may get them once a week. Why? Because I done took you off course. I've taken you from possessing your vessel. I've taken you and destroyed your witness. Come on, I want y'all to hear what the enemy does. It's all Jesus Christ has given this for our learning. Jesus Christ has given this for us to be built up. Jesus has given this up for us to be armed, for us to see how the enemy comes. But a lot of times we don't want to take this thing for our natural and practical life. Well, that's how I am. That's how I teach. I'm going to bring it natural and practical. Amen. Yes, it's the same thing that Delilah did with Samson. Absolutely. Absolutely. And listen to this. And I want to share a little bit about that because my husband spoke on this today. Guys, if you're on here, please share this with your friend for everybody that shared. I appreciate you. Thank you. Because if you have overcome, I guarantee you somebody in your friends list hasn't. And this may bless somebody tonight who's about to get on that. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Call. Listen. And it said, and so they, they both knew that they were naked. And so now you, now that the enemy has destroyed you, now you know that the all seeing, all knowing God who had been your provider and still is, who had covered you and watched you, who had filled you with his glory and still will has done all this. Now you feel separated because the sin did it, but the snake is gone. You know, that one that got through and rolled over and left. Ah, Listen. And it said, they, they took these fig leaves and they, they sewed them together and they made themselves aprons. And so what we normally do in kingdom now, what we do in Christendom now is we won't come to church the next Sunday. <laughs> we won't get, go to the next service because we're trying to sew these fig leaves. The condemnation is messing us up. We're trying to hide from the very voice in the presence of God, which is actually where we need to be because he's able to pick you up and to heal you. Listen. And it said in there, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And so what we do is we start hiding amongst those people who do the same thing that we've done. And so you had quit hanging around them before because you said, I'm pressing into God and I'm pressing into his presence. And somebody had literally came and told you, woman of God, man of God, the Lord showed me a dream about this person that you're with, or the Lord has given me this name. And the Lord has shown me if you're not careful that there will be a downfall. And so you, because you have heard your language being spoken to you by the enemy, you take one who is really your friend and you despise what they're saying. But now because of that, you don't want to go to church again, but the ones that you left alone because you were holy, you start making the phone calls. Hey, what you doing? They like, we ain't heard from you in a long time. Oh, it's good. What y'all up to? Why? Because I don't feel that I can go back in his presence. And that's where the enemy tries to wipe you out then. See, he took you off path, but now he's trying to wipe you out. Because if I can get you back out there, 
It's a possibility that you may not make it back in here. Somebody say, but God, thank God for his love, his grace, and his mercy for us. Amen. That he teaches us. I love him so much. And that he knows that we're going to finally get it. Amen. Listen. And so they hid themselves and the Lord God called unto Adam and he said, where are you? Do you understand that you're not there? It's not that he doesn't know where you are uh, uh, actually and literally. He's an all seeing. He's an all knowing God. But something that was connected us. Or, or, there was some, there was a pureness that connect us. Right? <laughs> and it's been severed. So where are you? And so they said, listen, we heard your voice and we were afraid. And we hid ourselves. And the Lord said, who told you you was naked? Who told you you so out there that I can't, that I can't restore it? Ah, who told you you so out there that I can't fix it? Who told you you're so messed up where they see all your scars and your bumps and your bruises and your lumps and your fat? Who told you all this stuff that is so bad that I won't receive? Yeah, I'm going to have to move you from this place. This is Adam and Eve. But I'm telling y'all right now, I don't care what you have shown, what's been exposed. Do you know Daddy God is calling you back because of the second Adam? <laughs> they came in and shed his blood for you. Who's going to teach you a new language? Who's going to restore you back to a holy language where your conversation is going to be changed. And this time you'll be strengthening him. Listen. And so he said, did you do what I told you not to do? Of course you got to, and you got to face the music. Yes. Confess your faults, right? You come to the Lord and you confess it. I believe that's first John one and nine. He's faithful. He's just, did you do it? Yes, Lord. But if you hide yourself, it's not that he don't know. He Hebrews 4, I believe, 13 or 14 tells us we're naked before him. Like we're laid out before him. Right? And it says, and the man said to the woman, this is the woman you gave me. And so she gave it to me and I ate. Right? Ain't we do that, Lord? Lord, he came to me saying all the right stuff, doing all the right things. He even gave me this little promise ring. Because <laughs> he know you said you need to be married before you have sex. Yeah. So if I can help you on today, quit teach them the language of you. You're dating somebody. You're just getting to know them. Hear me. You're dating somebody. You're just getting to know them. And they start saying, tell me all about you. Reverse that thing. Tell me all about you. <laughs> Why do I say reverse that thing? This is why. Because the enemy is so prideful, he's going to always tell on himself. All you got to do is listen. The enemy is so prideful, he's going to always tell on himself. All you have to do is listen. The very first time, I call it your spidey sis, even though I know it's the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost gets to screaming and ringing in this ear, I see you. They say, tell me all about yourself. I want to know all about you. You say, you know what? You go first. And listen to the Holy Ghost as they're speaking. Do you hear me? Listen to the Holy Ghost as you're speaking. Because his prideful self is going to always reveal who he is and what he's about. You just have to listen. That's why we're skillful tacticians. Do you understand? You're a skillful tactician. You have the Holy Ghost in here. Yes, be slow to speak. Be swift to hear. I share also with the men. I said, listen with Samson and Delilah. I said, this young lady, and I know this may sound crazy, but I think about it. If I see a man that's built like bam, 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 I'm probably not going to ask him where you get your strength from because from my natural mind, I'm going to think you're strong, right? We see pictures of Samson, he's built, but why would she ask him where he get his strength from? Because in my mind, I'm thinking he don't look like what's in him. Oh, Lord, today. He don't look like what's in him. So how are you able to do these great things? How are you able to do these great feats? Come on. The enemy's always watching you. And sometimes we don't look like what's really in us. And we don't even recognize what's really in us. And so here goes Delilah. And she's like, come on. Tell me all about you, boy. Tell me what makes you so strong. Again, I believe that if he had all these muscles, she probably would have been asking what makes you so strong. So he had to look ordinary. Yet. That she knew that there was something extraordinary about him. Hey, Sister Carla Shaw, how are you? 
The enemy knows. Those who are jealous know. Those who are insecure know. Those who want to bring you down know. You may look ordinary on the outside, but there's something extraordinary beaming from you. How can they do the things that they're doing? How are they sustaining the way they're sustaining? How are they living the way they're living? How are they whole the way they're whole? How do they have joy in the midst of all that stuff? I got to find out where their secret lies. So like Satan in the garden, Genesis 3, they start asking probing questions. How you smiling after you went through that? My heart would be broke if he did that to me. Girl, what exactly did he do? So Delilah begins to ask Samson these questions. And Samson plays with her. And he gives her these little things. And then she tries it against him. It fails. She asks again. And so I ask myself. When I was teaching this to, when I teach this to the men and to the women, if somebody does something to intentionally harm you after you told them that that hurts, do you stay? Most of the time, people do. They didn't mean it. Oh, I'm going to forgive them. Oh, I forgive you, but you're about to get to walk in. I'm trying to help you guys out because they're waiting to annihilate you. And then the moment you fall, they ghost. Go back to Genesis 3. The next time you hear about the serpent is when Jesus cursed him to crawl on his belly. He didn't say nothing. Oh, Jesus, I take the blame. I'm sorry, God. I take the blame. I caused her to do it. That ain't how that go. (laughs) So she continues to ask these probing questions to Samson till finally she wears him down. They ask you questions night after night. They take you to dinner and ask you questions throughout dinner. They talk to your kids and they find information from your children and all to find out where your strength lies. They'll even go to church with you, sit on the pew with you. They probably not paying too much attention, but you like, he's here. She's here. God going to change them for me. And the whole while God is saying, there's your sign. There's your sign. Don't be unequally yoked with this. We think unequally yoked means just not that they're not a believer. I mean, they're not a believer. They're unbelievers. So don't be with them. No, they have no passion, no interest in God, but they're cute. So you stay. They, they, they are literally have, have a poverty mindset and you have a mind to build. Those two things will always clash. Listen, you have, you have a passion to go deeper in God. They're just comfortable with sitting on the pew. That's unequally yo. I love y'all. I really do. And so finally she wears him down till he say, listen, listen. If you cut my hair, and the hair is a woman's glory. Back then, hair was a symbol of of strength for men. Listen, you have zero agreement in Christ. It was a a symbol of strength for men. It showed their beauty, their prowess, their hand. And so for his hair, and he was promised to God from the very beginning. And he was a Nazarite, and he was supposed to lead the people. The Lord told me to ask people. This while I was in Texas, what if you're following, what if you're trying to follow someone you're actually meant to lead? Ah, my God, love you too. Love you too. What if you're trying to follow this man that you're supposed to be leading out? Ah, now I ain't talking about Jezebel stuff. I'm talking about you're supposed to be bringing him out of darkness into God's marvelous light, not to marry you. Ah, I said something right there. God help me today. God just wanted to use you because you was in the right place. And God know that, that, that his word is in there, but you see him and you're single and you're lonely. And so you witness to him and he starts coming to church, but now you start witnessing to mold him to you. You start teaching him your language. You start cooking for him. You start picking him up. He ain't got to catch the bus no more. I need somebody to fear me. You're trying to show him how much you can provide. And the Lord said, I just needed you to bring him here for me to clean him up. Because I didn't send him for you. I actually sent him for her. So now you and Sister Red Dress get into it. Because after he get Christ for real, he, 
I'm done. So listen. So Delilah talking to Samson, 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 gets the secret, set him up for the fall. My husband said something so powerful today when he was ministering. He said that when the Philistines began to give the money, then the Lord of the Philistines began to give the money to Delilah. They did it while Samson could still see. Because I want you to see what took you out. I want you this to be the last face you see. The very one you trusted with your secret was the one who was setting up the trap for you. And then they took his eyes. When you teach them your language before time, I want my husband to know my love language. And so when I knew this thing was serious and when he put it, not a promise ring, but he put a, I want you to marry me ring. Praise God. I'm glad this is helping you. I just felt led to come on here tonight. I said, I ain't put on no makeup on that. You see me in a row, right? I just love people. And there's a way that we have to teach people without doing all the ah and holding ears and stuff like that and screaming and, a, ah, and all that stuff. Just talk, right? And so, so there's something, listen, prophet, how are you? Prophet Dennis, how are you? I, I look forward to seeing you and your wife again. Listen, and so... Because so, so again, like I said, when it comes to that point where there is a ring, real intention, there is a date on both of you guys' side, right? Both of you guys, you're saying, yes, we're going to marry, get married this day. Then I can tell you really some of the deeper things. I may have been revealing things because I know we're kind of going somewhere, but some of y'all telling stuff the first week you just met him. Some of y'all telling stuff you two weeks in. But because you told him the first week, your language, the second week, he talks it. Ah, oh, Lord, my God. I know this is good. I know this is good. Hear me, saints of God, before I jump off of here. Quit teaching the enemy your language. If you've been one that's been in the same cycle, the same type of man, and it breaks up, You've been in the same cycle. Some of y'all have continued to go to leaders. Ah, thank you, Lord. Help me. Continue to go to leaders who will only keep wounding you because you keep giving all your secrets before you really see who you're about to submit to. I love you guys. We're going to make it. We're already making it. 2020 is phenomenal. I'm telling you, quit releasing secrets before the time. Don't give your love language so quick. Don't give your inner secrets so quick. Hear me when I say there is a right one for some of you. I never tell every single person that you're going to get married. I'm not. I believe there's going to be some singles when Jesus come back. But I'm telling you, if the Lord shared with you, if the Lord himself shared with you that there is a mate for you, do you hear me? If the Lord himself shared with you that there is a mate for you, then wait on his time and wait on his timing to release. Do you hear me? Wait on his timing to release secrets. Look at your past. You gave them the secrets within a week or two. By the second month when they got some, you didn't hear from them anymore. If you're just getting on, go back to the beginning. This is very powerful. It's very sweet, but it's going to help you. It wasn't until my husband was like, look, I want you to be my wife. And then went to my pastor. Y'all, I was like, oh, he ain't playing. <laughs> I want to marry her. I'm like, oh, you can get some secrets to you. <laughs> So then I began to be vulnerable with him, right? I began to tell him things because I wanted us to be one. I hope this helps somebody on here. I can't scream and get loud, you know, like I normally do. I'm trying to let my voice get healed. But I think this is the proper tone for tonight. Amen. I believe it is. So I appreciate you guys for listening. If you haven't shared, share 
Amen. I believe this is going to bless you tremendously. If you have leaders, and I believe I have leader friends who are on here. If you have pastors that are on here, Pastor Stephen, what you laughing at? But if you have pastor friends that are on here that you know, love God. Yes, they tap you. They do like Jesus do. Jesus, I'm going to cut you, but I'm going to bind you up. I'm going to wound you, but I'm going to heal you. I may have twisted a little bit, right? Yes. But what he's going to do is he said, I got to cut you to get you where you need to be, right? And so there's some things, you guys, that there's just so much. So I'm going to be sharing more with you guys. Hey, before I get off here, we are heading back to Texas. Amen. You're listening with your daughter. Awesome. I pray that this bless her. Listen, if she gets this right now, she won't have to go through the things that a lot of us adult women went through. Right. Let her get it right now. Like teach her these principles right now. Uh, Cause them little boys know how to get there too. Hello. Hello. So, but we're heading back to Texas. Listen, I launched, um, um, Octavia Stanley ministries international this weekend. My God, one of my spiritual daughters, Kimberly Pierce is down there. I love that baby. And we, are. uh, the Lord told me to just invest a lot of time in her with healing and deliverance and restoring her back to the place where she needs to be because she has so much power in her. And I'm so excited. He said, but I want you as an apostle to go and I want you to shift the territory and what uh, that area th- there, there's a small area there's Grand Prairie that I'm supposed to be in and I went down there listen now however people from all over the DFW area came it was amazing but when we got close to the location which is held at her house. She has a really big, beautiful house. And uh, we actually got to the point where it was standing room only. Uh, praise God for that. But as I was coming in, and most of you guys know if you travel, a lot of you guys know if you travel for ministry, the principality will always, oh. will always show his face, right? And so we got to this corner where this, there was this sparrow on the uh, um on a utility thing. And the Lord told me it was a scanner. He shared with me that it was a watcher. Listen, well, I don't think that was a sparrow, but that's what it looked like to me. Either way, we hit the point and something hit my ear. And it's almost like I went into, it, it sounded like I was in a tunnel and it tried to start hum, but it was so powerful that it shifted our GPS and took it off where it only had the, and I went into warfare immediately. I was like, oh no, I can't even tell you the words, but I told everybody, I said, quit talking. And I went into warfare and but they were looking at the screen like oh my god what just happened to because we were using a Gorman GPS and it literally like shook and so I went into warfare and within like 30 seconds or so the hollow sound went and all that like that and so we went and my god I'm talking about devils were cast out I'm talking about people were healed. There was deliverance. That night was so amazing. The people didn't want to leave after. So, but listen, the same thing. We have to move to a bigger location because people are already singing. I'm bringing other people with me. We already have people in Kansas City who say we're going this time. Okay. So we're going back to Grand Prairie, Texas, March 27th and 28th. Amen. That's exactly what that was. And so we, so we, so we'll be there March 27th to 28th, March 27th. I'll be preaching, um, at 6 30 PM. Listen, but March 28th, Saturday morning, my husband, apostle Dean Stanley, that tall drink of water, that powerful man of God, he's going to be preaching, uh, that Saturday at 10 AM. Listen, you guys need to get, I don't care where you need to fly from. We've already had to do a room block because we have people saying, listen, we want my room right now. Can I pay for it right now? I'm ready to go right now. And so we have a room block, all the information we're going to be putting up as I post a new flyer with a new location and time you guys want to come. This is going to be a once a month gathering. The only time it may not be is in April because I'll be in Kenya. But other than that, we're going strong. Amen. We're going to do the work of the Lord. I met some leaders down there. So it's going to be great. But I pray this, guys, bless you. 
I, I pray this bless you guys. And I just speak the blessings of the Lord over you right now. I just speak that God will give you so much wisdom, so much knowledge and understanding. I pray that he will make you skilled in the word. I pray that the interest of the word, his word according to his word, will bring light to you. It will illuminate situations. It will illuminate issues and give you wisdom and instruction on how to come out of it. I speak that this this march, this this mad, what they say, march madness, or for us, marching forward, or, or I'm going to march into a new place. I pray that march will hold something so new, something so ex- exceptional, something so successful for you, that you know, that you know, that you know that God's plan for you for 2020 is going to prosper and beyond. I speak that your understanding in the word will grow, that you will literally go beyond the surface understanding to where you will get a revelation in the word and then it will go from a revelation to a prophetic word to you. I speak that over you right now in the name of Jesus, that you will literally be in the word reading and that your understanding will be so open that you yourself have to exclaim, oh my God, where did that come from? And I speak that you're going to hold it, that your brain, your brain cells, the gray matter will hold information, will begin to expand so you can take in more and more and more of God. I speak that the gifts are called and the talent that God has put on your life that you will begin to operate in in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus and those of you who are called to the fivefold you will take a seat in the authority that God has given you and you will not be afraid to identify with what he has called you and you will operate it in it with no fear of rejection amen God I bless you I thank you for these here your people I thank you for your purpose and plans for their lives Lord I thank you Father God that this year is going to be extraordinary for them God and even in the face of Christ crisis, trial, temptation, cycles, whatever, they're going to stand strong and victorious. We give your name, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hey, for those of you in the Kansas City area or you're close to the Grandview area, come out and visit with us. If you just want a place to come and visit, actually tomorrow night at 6 p.m., I'm going to be teaching homiletics. Oh my God, people have already registered. So we're going to be teaching homiletics on tomorrow, um, 6 p.m., 12127 Blue Ridge Extension, Suite H in Grandview, Missouri. Again, that address is 12127 Blue Ridge Extension, Suite H in Grandview, Missouri, tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Other than that, our services are Sunday at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., Come on out and join us. God bless you guys. Have a phenomenal day. Excuse me, a phenomenal light in the Lord. Love you.